Hello everyone, I'm Wurgum, and today I will be playing New Super Mario Bros. Wii 9-8. But the auto-scroll is painfully slow, but keeps accelerating. So today I will essentially be wasting your time, so buckle up. So this level is... well it's 9-8, it is an auto-scrolling level, so... That didn't, doesn't change, but as you can see... The auto scroll is extremely slow, uh, so yeah, it it's incredibly slow. So it takes like several seconds to even move like one tile over. So yeah, probably not a very fun level to play anyway. But uh, yeah, that is essentially the gist of it. I will be playing this level and. Yeah, well, I guess auto scrolls kind of just uh, doing its thing. It's it's warming up. I'll just say it's warming up. Yeah, we'll personify auto scroll today. Auto scroll is just having trouble waking up. So yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I think I think an extra I think uh, sorry voice crack. <laughs> I think an extra challenge with this level is that like there are a bunch of bouncy clouds that uh, are really well. They really don't go very well with auto school. They don't they don't make the game really easy for you to play. So um... we are just playing around with the propeller suit today, and not much else. A cool trick I was discovering as I was like playing around with the propeller suit is that you can do this sort of uh, propeller drill thing. Make it look like activating the propeller suit is actually making like a torpedo or drill. Well, yeah. So... I've also noticed that I don't really use propeller suits a whole lot in my levels, so... I honestly think propeller suits are kind of a little OP, to be honest. Like... I mean, first of all, yeah, they, they make getting a flagpole, like, way too easy. Like, the top of the flagpole, you know that challenge? Well, if you played the Super Mario Bros. Wii, you do. Yeah, and it's lagging a lot, but... Propeller suits are kind of just... They're cheater, aren't they? I mean, yeah, they kind of really are like a way to cheese a lot of a, lots of levels. Uh, of course, unless you design your level specifically to use the propeller suit, for the most part, uh, they kind of serve as a cheating device. Um, and you kind of really start to take for granted what the propeller suit can do when once you start playing like games that don't have that sort of power up, that don't have a flying power up. Mainly New Super Mario Bros. DS, which is another game I've modded. Uh, they don't have any propeller suits, of course, so... Yeah, you kind of are just... you're kind of bound to the ground in New Super Mario Bros. DS. And yeah, I didn't even realize that New Super Mario Bros. DS only, like, had, like, two primary power-ups, namely the Fire Flower and then the, just the Blue Shell. And I mean, honestly, the Blue Shell is kind of overrated as a power-up, like... First of all, it's hard to control once you go spinning in the shell. It makes it makes you go into shell mode even if you don't want to while you're running. You automatically go into it and then next thing you know you can't change your direction and then you fall into a pit and then that's just uh, it's really infuriating. It's hard to control. Uh, oh shoot, my game's lagging a lot. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'll move my laptop a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't think my laptop's really designed to record and run the game at the same time, so... There's that. Okay, this is really painful. I'm pretty sure this game is mostly pretty painful to all of you, but... Yeah. Okay, the lag's cleared up. It's just a massive lag spike. Anyway, the blue shell... It's kind of overrated. You can't control it very well. Uh, you can't steer very well. I mean, I kind of like the propeller suit in some ways because 
well, it's generally pretty intuitive, easy to control. Um, and I mean, any flying power up in a platforming game is, well, gonna be pretty useful. But then my only gripe is that it just makes certain challenges not really challenges, they're like, it makes it too easy, so, there's that. And then I mean, there are other interesting iterations of like the flying slash gliding and all that. There's the, like, the acorn suit, people like to call it the nut suit, but... Eh, it's just mostly like a reiteration of other flying power-ups. I guess it has a cool like gliding mechanic and then you can like do a little hop. It's kind of a different twist on it, but I would still call it like an aerial power-up, I guess you could say. Here come the next set of fuzzies as the screen slowly drifts. The screen is drifting like, uh, I guess, continents do on the planet. Have any of you heard of uh, tectonic plates and continental drifts? Drift? I hope you have heard of it. I presume a lot of you have, but I mean, I don't know. Depends on what my audience actually knows, but... Yeah, essentially, continental drift is the idea. It's a theory that uh, continents will move due to tectonic plate shifts from, I guess, mantle pressure and mantle convection currents, so... Uh, and essentially, the hypothesis is that at one point, all of the different continents in the world were combined into this one supercontinent called Pangaea. I don't know, I think a lot of you have heard of it, Pangaea. Uh, I know pan means everything, like, yeah, pan just means all-encompassing. Uh, Gia, I think Gia maybe is like Gaia for life or something? Pangaea, Pangaea, I don't know. I need to look up the etymology, but, yeah. So the auto-scrolls like Continental Drift is what I'm essentially saying. Uh, well, I mean, Continental Drift probably doesn't, like, accelerate to, like, an un unreasonable speed, but... I mean, it would be fascinating if Continental Drift just kept accelerating, and then at one point, continents are just moving around by the millisecond, crashing and dividing amongst each other. But yeah, uh, this auto-scroll speed is like my subscriber count growing, honestly. Speaking of which, if you like my content in general, you should consider subscribing, maybe. Uh, yeah, no, shameless ad. Well, subscribe if you want to, you're not entitled to subscribe to me, but... Well, yeah, that's... that'll just be my plug-in. Another really interesting thing, though, about, like, Content Rebel Drift is, like, it creates, like, geography and, like... Essentially, the geography we have today is made out of the tectonic plate movements that happened long ago, and it essentially formed how humans interact with our environment, I guess, is another thing to think about, you know? That's kind of really satisfying, killing fuzzies like that. I kind of just discovered that throwing this thing actually kills them, so... But yeah, really fascinating thing about that is that you like it has to do with geography and like geography influences how humans uh, society and culture develops, I guess you could say. And yeah, this ties into the whole idea of like history and then like it brings in the question of like is there a certain de deterministic trait about uh, geography? Does geography determine one's culture or what actually determines a culture? And essentially, uh, what a culture is, is essentially it's a complex uh, social structure. Uh, I guess you could call it the programming of humans. Humans are programmed to believe certain things or do certain things. And I mean, culture is very different from, like, I guess, instinctual programming, like humans' instincts. Like, we're talking about a higher order of programming. Like, culture really determines how one sees the world, honestly, so... And I think cultures adapt to different geographies. I don't know. I guess history is fun also because, like, it's a lot of different colors on a map. It's, uh, it's empires expanding, shrinking, I don't know. Uh, and then it brings in the fascination of, like, borders and stuff. Borders are kind of a weird thing in my opinion, like, 
why do humans draw random lines in the sand anyway? Like, or they aren't really lines in the sand, but like, there are these like invisible lines that we just say, okay, you can't pass this line, uh, otherwise you're in a different country. And we have to like guard our borders or something, whatever that means. Uh, and yeah, it's like, humans just want to draw these different lines and they want to divide things up. But then it's kind of crazy to think you like cross over a line and then suddenly you're under a different set of rules, you know? It's very interesting, you know? Because borders don't actually exist in real life, they're completely constructed by humans. It's a social construct, you know? And social constructs are another really fascinating subject, I guess. It really ties into the whole idea of culture, and... I really need to focus on one topic, honestly, but... We have made a lot of progress on this auto-scrolling, but... At this point, you'll notice that the auto-scrolling actually is starting to become a little more visible, so... Yeah, that's really cool. Um, essentially what I did for auto-scrolling is that I had, like... Well, essentially how auto-scroll works is you have this auto-scroll controller sprite in the level editor, and it's path-controlled, essentially. So you create a path, and the auto-scrolling will scroll the screen according to the pathway you set. And yeah, the pathway is dictated by these nodes, and then nodes actually are given certain speeds. So what I did was I took the speed and I made it 0 0.2. 0, 1 for the first speed, but then each subsequent one increased by like a quadratic equation, so the acceleration is actually getting faster as you continue, and you might notice that right now. It's actually accelerating faster, and then once the auto scroll gets fast enough, I kind of separate it into certain intervals of, I guess, acceleration. And once you hit a different node, the speed kind of just increases. And look, yeah, the speed's increasing now, so. This is the really exciting point now. Alright, yeah, okay. And then essentially what happens is it just becomes hard to keep up, you know? At first, auto scroll is struggling to keep up with you, now you're struggling to keep up with auto scroll. You know, how ironic is that? Oh shoot. I'm very sorry about all the lag. Arr! Oh, I killed one at least though. That is my uh, vindictive nature. Oh! Oh well. I guess that does it, but you saw how fast that went. Well anyway, I guess that's pretty much all of our video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like. If you didn't, uh, feel free to leave a dislike. I mean, you might, leave, you might dislike it because I wasted your time, but I told you at the beginning, so uh, don't be sad about that. Uh, and if you like my content in general, uh, consider subscribing. Well, anyway, I'm Wargum, and I bid you all farewell.